Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about affordable housing initiatives. It's no secret that housing in many major cities like Toronto, San Francisco, Vancouver, Los Angeles is increasingly difficult to find and highly unaffordable. In a free market, this is a function of supply and demand, and many of these cities have struggled with allowing new supply as a result of bureaucratic gridlock. Some homeowners have added supply to the market by adding secondary suites or accessory dwelling units. These are often basement apartments in climates where homes have basements. Sometimes it's an attic apartment or a rear apartment. Maybe it's a detached garage with an accessory dwelling, but in each case, the accessory dwelling has to share the utilities from the main house. A few years ago, a new classification of accessory dwelling units was introduced. These coach houses, sometimes called backyard tiny homes, are separate dwellings that just like their attached counterparts, they have to take the utilities from the main house. The province of Ontario just introduced legislation that would in fact allow for two accessory dwelling units on each R1 residential property for a total of three dwellings. You could have a basement dwelling or an attic apartment attached to the main house and a separate coach house all on the same property. The idea is that these units are among the more affordable units in the market and they would contribute supply at the affordable end of the spectrum. Allowing builders a free hand to add supply at the top end of the market does add supply, but it doesn't necessarily address affordability. Accessory dwellings suffer from a few problems. Number one, there are simply not that many of them, and many lenders and appraisers have a hard time valuing them. There's countless stories of lenders undervaluing them and requiring owners to bring a lot more cash to the table when funding these improvements. And number two, The cost of these units is often disproportionately high when compared with the cost of new construction that, say, a high-volume home builder would use. Coach houses are not new, but they are new in the zoning code in many cities as they try to create incentives for affordable housing. The latest startup venture to make headlines is called Samara, and it was started by Joe Gabbia, a co-founder of Airbnb. The Samara product is a modular build that can be assembled quickly on site in a tiny backyard home. The focus initially is in California. These kits come fully equipped. The starting prices for Samara's ADU line, which they have branded as Backyard, will range from $299,000 for a 430-square-foot studio to $339,000 for a 550-square-foot one-bedroom suite in the San Francisco Bay Area. They're going to have slightly lower prices for homes in Southern California. But this is where, naturally, I just do the math on these prices. It's so deeply ingrained in me, I can't help myself. The larger homes at 550 square feet is costing $616 per square foot to build. And the smaller home at 430 square feet is priced at $697 per square foot. Personally, I find these prices off the charts. When you consider that a single family home can be built for $120 per square foot in many states across the United States, there's no reason for these houses to be priced above $600 a square foot. Naturally, the most expensive parts of a house are the kitchen and bathrooms, but even so, when you consider that a moderate kitchen can be built for $200 per linear foot, these kitchens can only be so big. It would be virtually impossible to spend more than ten grand on a kitchen in a home that's only 550 square feet. The profit margins being commanded at these prices have to be very high. Now, I realize that retail buyers often pay more than professionals for what amounts to the same product. But at a certain point, I have to believe that people in San Francisco have access to the internet as well, and they can figure out how much things should really cost. Relying on your customers to remain ignorant is rarely a winning business strategy. Maybe there's just a small number of players in the space and the lack of competition has allowed high prices to persist. Well, the state of California issued 20,000 building permits for ADUs in 2021. That's up from 12,500 in 2019 and just 1,100 back in 2016. That's according to the California Department of Housing and Community Development. That's in addition to the 64,000 housing starts for single-family residences in 2021. In addition, there were 51,000 multifamily apartments started in California in that same time period. As a percentage of the total, ADUs represent 14.8% of all the new units contributed to the market. Communities generally like accessory dwellings because on the one hand, they don't add a lot of load to the infrastructure. The average detached home has 3.4 people living in it compared with 1.6 people in an apartment. 
you're not putting much additional load on the utilities infrastructure since the ADU forms a part of the original house and the city doesn't need to pave streets or expand the public transit system. Intensification within the existing urban boundary continues to provide more efficient use of the existing city infrastructure. But there are several headwinds that are going to continue to make this housing unaffordable. The most recent is rising interest rates. Some aspects of construction have risen faster than the rate of inflation. While lumber prices have fallen, costs for insulation have nearly doubled. Costs for HVAC are up, and with rising energy costs, a detached tiny home is going to consume more than its fair share of energy compared with others. It's simply difficult to make such a small house efficient. In order for these initiatives to become compelling, it's going to take a specialist to enter the market on a large scale and make the numbers really compelling. And financing for these ADUs is a big impediment. If you have a long-term fixed rate loan, it's difficult to add an ADU to your mortgage. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.